So this will be a fun test. We have some bifacial solar panels and I mounted them really high. And this will increase the amount of radiation that they can absorb in the back. The higher you mount them off the ground, the more radiation they can absorb. Also, if the environment reflects light onto the back of the panel, such as snow or a white driveway or white gravel rocks, that will also increase the output. So even a 400 watt bifacial panel, if it's mounted perfectly and with a good environment behind it, it can crank all the way up to 500 watts. And the name for this increase of output for a bifacial solar panel is called bifacial gain. Now, a few years ago, bifacial solar panels used to cost quite a bit more. And in a desert environment like mine, it really wasn't worth the added cost. Going by my past test results, we found out it was better to just buy more solar panels and buy the cheapest ones out there. But now, bifacial solar panels are super cheap. So let's talk about my results. I lifted these panels up and then I tested for the maximum output at midday when the solar cell was at its peak temperature. Now these are also bifacial solar panels, but they're mounted on the ground. And this is the worst way you could possibly mount these things. The bifacial gain should be practically zero or very small. And then in the back, we have a ground mount array with the same panels. So we're gonna compare the numbers for all three and figure out if there's a bifacial gain. So I waited until midday on a 100 degree day and I recorded the max output for all of these strings. So first results are the solar panels on the ground and the output relative to STC was only 75%. So of this 8,000 watt array, the best I could ever get over multiple days was 6,000 watts. And each of these panels are rated for 400 watts. So on average, the peak was about 300 watts each. Next up, we have a 1600 watt ground mount, and these are all the same panels, 400 watts. And with this configuration here in the desert on a very hot day, the best I could get was 91% of STC output. So the bifacial gain was 6% over the panels that were on the ground, which is quite significant, especially if you have a large system. Now, not only does this configuration allow you to absorb more radiation from the back, but it also cools the panel down with convective airflow. And the lower the cell temperature, the higher the output. Also, your solar panels will last longer if you lift them up and keep them at a cooler temperature. Now for the results of this array on a hot day, we pulled 95% of STC output but we did not hit 100%. So even in the desert, these temperatures are so high that even if we have it lifted up this high off the ground, I'm still not getting over 100% STC output. Now compared to the last mount that's closer to the ground, we're only getting a bifacial gain of 4%. If my yard was filled with snow and it wasn't over 100 degrees every day during summer, these things would probably be outputting 450 watts or more each. But here in the desert, not so much of a benefit, but the benefits still exist. So for some of you guys, it might make sense. For some, it may not. Now, something else you need to consider is where you're mounting your panels. For this spot in particular, it makes sense to lift up the panels in the back because they're not shading anything behind them. But if I were to lift these panels up, they would shade the ones behind them and I would have to spread them out. And then I couldn't put as many solar panels in this spot. Also in the morning, in the afternoon, these panels are shaded. This is more for the midday sun. And they actually output a lot over the course of a day but my goal is to absorb as much radiation when the sun is directly overhead, which means I'm gonna squeeze as many panels in here as close together as possible so I can get the most energy throughout the day. If I were to lift these up and avoid the shadows, I would lose a whole row of panels and that would reduce my total midday output significantly. Now, should I use bifacials on the ground? Probably not but they're practically just as cheap as the other ones now. And these are nice and light and easy to move and the output is really good for the size. So I'm still gonna use them. But the type of solar panel that you choose can vary greatly depending on the environment for which you're mounting it. If you live in a hot environment, monocrystalline panels are fantastic, especially if you can get them for a good price. Now, something that people do not consider with bifacial solar panels is the cost of mounting them. And to have them lifted up that high can be very expensive. Now, if you have a limited space for your solar array, bifacial panels do make the most sense because the output for the size is always going to be better. Now, with all of that said, the last thing we need to consider is the price. 
and bifacial solar panels are getting cheaper over time. Even though I was not a fan of them at first because they were very heavy and the output wasn't that good, now the output is just as good as a good monocrystalline and they're lightweight and easy to install. And the warranty is getting better for these. So some of them have 25 or 30 year warranties. Also the temperature coefficient is different on a bifacial and they actually have better performance in higher temperatures. So for all of those reasons, that's why people are buying bifacials. They work really well and I like the Aptos and a couple other ones, the Hyperions are just as good. I bought them, they're pretty much the same as an Aptos panel. I really don't see any difference on the panel at all. But they are made by a different manufacturer altogether, but there's other manufacturers and they all seem to have this model of panel with the same features, the same output, similar warranties. So there's lots of options on the market and they are very cheap right now. Now, if I was in a cold environment and we had snow on the ground, these results would be totally different, especially mounted up that high. We would get some crazy numbers, but for the desert, we don't, but we still get a bifacial gain. And for some of you, it might make economic sense. Some of you, it might not. But for most of you, these are pretty cheap and they have a better warranty, so that's why most people are buying them but it depends on your environment and how you wish to mount them so there's lots of variables here but bifacial gain is pretty cool and you can actually measure it i just wanted to brag about my results and show you what i built because this thing's pretty awesome but it was only a four percent difference over that so not that great but I have another array on my roof, which is great. So thank you so much for watching and I hope this helps you guys. Please leave a comment below if there's anything that's confusing and I will see you in the next video. Bye.